Anakantavada Sanskrit Anakantavada many sidedness refers to the Jain doctrine about metaphysical truths that emerged in ancient India. It states that the ultimate truth and reality is complex and has multiple aspects. Anakantavada has also been interpreted to mean non-absolutism, intellectual ahimsa, religious pluralism, as well as a rejection of fanaticism that leads to terror attacks and mass violence. Some scholars state that modern revisionism has attempted to reinterpret Anakantavada with religious tolerance, open mindedness, and pluralism. According to Jainism, no single, specific statement can describe the nature of existence and the absolute truth. This knowledge, Kavala it adds, is comprehended only by the Arahants. Other beings and their statements about absolute truth are incomplete, and at best a partial truth. All knowledge claims, according to the Anakantavada doctrine must be qualified in many ways, including being affirmed and denied. Anakantavada is a fundamental doctrine of Jainism. The origins of Anakantavada can be traced back to the teachings of Mahavira 599 to 527 BCE, the 24th Jain Tirthankara. The dialectical concepts of Syadvada, conditioned viewpoints, and Nayavada, partial viewpoints arose from Anakantavada in the medieval era, providing Jainism with more detailed logical structure and expression. The details of the doctrine emerged in Jainism in the first millennium CE, from debates between scholars of Jain, Buddhist and Hindu schools of philosophies. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word Anakantavada is a compound of two Sanskrit words, Anakanta and Vada. The word Anakanta itself is composed of three root words, an, not, aka, one, and, anta, end, side, together it connotes, not one-ended, sided, many-sidedness, or, manifoldness. The word Vada means, doctrine, way, speak, thesis. The term Anakantavada is translated by scholars as the doctrine of many-sidedness, non-one-sidedness, or many-pointedness. The term Anakantavada is not found in early texts considered canonical by Svetambara tradition of Jainism. However, traces of the doctrines are found in comments of Mahavira in these Svetambara texts, where he states that the finite and infinite depends on one's perspective. The word Anakantavada was coined by Acharya Sadasan Devakar to significant the teaching of Mahavira that truth can be expressed in infinite ways. The earliest comprehensive teachings of Anakantavada doctrine is found in the Tattvarthasutra by Acharya Umaswami, and is considered to be authoritative by all Jain sects. In the Digambara tradition texts, the Two Truths theory of Kunda Kunda also provides the core of this doctrine. Topic. Philosophical overview The Jain doctrine of Anakantavada, also known as Anakantatva, states that truth and reality is complex and always has multiple aspects. Reality can be experienced, but it is not possible to totally express it with language. Human attempts to communicate is naya, or partial expression of the truth. Language is not truth, but a means and attempt to express truth. From truth, according to Mahavira, language returns and not the other way around. One can experience the truth of a taste, but cannot fully express that taste through language. Any attempts to express the experience as syat, or valid, in some respect, but it still remains a, perhaps, just one perspective, incomplete. In the same way, spiritual truths are complex, they have multiple aspects, language cannot express their plurality, yet through effort and appropriate karma they can be experienced. The Anakantavada premises of the Jains is ancient, as evidenced by its mention in Buddhist texts such as the Samanyafala Sutta. The Jain Agamas suggest that Mahavira's approach to answering all metaphysical philosophical questions was a qualified yes. Syat. These texts identify Anakantavada doctrine to be one of the key differences between the teachings of the Mahavira and those of the Buddha. The Buddha taught the middle way, rejecting extremes of the answer, it is, or it is not, to metaphysical questions. The Mahavira, in contrast, taught his followers to accept both, it is, and it is not, with, perhaps, qualification and with reconciliation to understand the absolute reality. 
Syadvada predication logic and Nayavada perspective epistemology of Jainism expand on the concept of Anakantavada. Syadvada recommends the expression of Anakanta by prefixing the epithet Syad to every phrase or expression describing the nature of existence. The Jain doctrine of Anakantavada, according to Bimal Matalal, states that no philosophic or metaphysical proposition can be true if it is asserted without any condition or limitation. For a metaphysical proposition to be true, according to Jainism, it must include one or more conditions syadvada or limitations nayavada standpoints. Topic: <laughs> Syadvada Syadvada Sanskrit, Syadvada is the theory of conditioned predication, the first part of which is derived from the Sanskrit word syat Sanskrit, syat which is the third person singular of the optative tense of the Sanskrit verb as Sanskrit, as to be, and which becomes syad when followed by a vowel or a voiced consonant, in accordance with sandhi. The optative tense in Sanskrit formerly known as the potential has the same meaning as the present tense of the subjunctive mood in most Indo-European languages, including Hindi, Latin, Russian, French, etc. It is used when there is uncertainty in a statement, not it is, but it may be, one might, etc. The subjunctive is very commonly used in Hindi, for example, in Kya Kahun, what to say. The subjunctive is also commonly used in conditional constructions, for example, one of the few English locutions in the subjunctive which remains more or less current is were it, then, or, more commonly, if it were, where were is in the past tense of the subjunctive. Syat can be translated into English as meaning, perchance, maybe, perhaps. It is. The use of the verb as in the optative tense is found in the more ancient Vedic era literature in a similar sense. For example, Sutra 1.4.96 of Panini's Astadayi explains it as signifying a chance, maybe, probable. In Jainism, however, Syadvada and Anakanta is not a theory of uncertainty, doubt or relative probabilities. Rather, it is conditional yes or conditional approval of any proposition, state Madhalal and other scholars. This usage has historic precedence in classical Sanskrit literature, and particularly in other ancient Indian religions Buddhism and Hinduism with the phrase syad ta meaning, let it be so, but, or, an answer that is neither yes nor no, provisionally accepting an opponent's viewpoint for a certain premise. This would be expressed in archaic English with the subjunctive, be it so, a direct translation of syad a ta Traditionally, this debate methodology was used by Indian scholars to acknowledge the opponent's viewpoint, but disarm and bound its applicability to certain context and persuade the opponent of aspects not considered. According to Charitrapragya, in Jain context, Syadvada does not mean a doctrine of doubt or skepticism, rather, it means multiplicity or multiple possibilities. Syat in Jainism connotes something different from what the term means in Buddhism and Hinduism. In Jainism, it does not connote an answer that is neither yes nor no, but it connotes a many-sidedness to any proposition with a sevenfold predication. Syadvada is a theory of qualified predication, states Collar. It states that all knowledge claims must be qualified in many ways, because reality is many-sided. It is done so systematically in later Jain texts through Saptabhanginaya or the theory of sevenfold scheme. These Saptabhangi seem to be have been first formulated in Jainism by the 5th or 6th century CE Svetambara scholar Malavadin, and they are Affirmation, Syad Asti. In some ways, it is Denial, Syan Nasti. In some ways, it is not Joint but successive affirmation and denial, Syad Asti Nasti. In some ways, it is, and it is not Joint and simultaneous affirmation and denial, Syad Asti Avaktavya. In some ways, it is, and it is indescribable. Joint and simultaneous affirmation and denial, Syan Nasti Avaktavya. In some ways, it is not, and it is indescribable. Joint and simultaneous affirmation and denial, Syad Asti Nasti Avaktavya. In some ways, it is, it is not, and it is indescribable. Joint and simultaneous affirmation and denial, Syad Avaktavya. In some ways, it is indescribable. Each of these seven predicates state the Jain viewpoint of a multifaceted reality from the perspective of time, space, substance and mode. 
The phrase syat declares the standpoint of expression, affirmation with regard to own substance dravya, place kasetra, time kala, and being bhava, and negation with regard to other substance dravya, place kasetra, time kala, and being bhava. Thus, for a jar, in regard to substance dravya, earthen, it simply is, wooden, it simply is not. In regard to place kasetra, room, it simply is, terrace, it simply is not. In regard to time kala, summer, it simply is, winter, it simply is not. In regard to being bhava, brown, it simply is, white, it simply is not. And the word simply has been inserted for the purpose of excluding a sense not approved by the nuance, for avoidance of a meaning not intended, according to Samantabhadra's text Aptamimamsa verse 105. Syadvada, the doctrine of conditional predications, and Kevalajnana omniscience, are both illuminators of the substances of reality. The difference between the two is that while Kevalajnana illumines directly, Syadvada illumines indirectly. Syadvada is indispensable and helps establish the truth, according to Samantabhadra. Nayavada <inaudible> <inaudible> Nayavada Sanskrit, Nayavada is the theory of standpoints or viewpoints. Nayavada is a compound of two Sanskrit words, naya, standpoint, viewpoint, interpretation, and vada, doctrine, thesis. Nayas are philosophical perspective about a particular topic, and how to make proper conclusions about that topic. According to Jainism, there are seven nayas or viewpoints through which one can make complete judgments about absolute reality using syadvada. These seven naya, according to Umaswati, are Nagama naya, common sense or a universal view Samgraha naya, generic or class view that classifies it Vyavahara naya, pragmatic or a particular view assesses its utility Rijusutra naya, linear view considers it in present time Sabda naya, verbal view that names it Samabharuda naya, etymological view uses the name and establishes it nature Avambuddha Naya, actuality view considers its concrete particulars. The Naya theory emerged after about the 5th century CE, and underwent extensive development in Jainism. There are many variants of Nayavada concept in later Jain texts. A particular viewpoint is called a Naya or a partial viewpoint. According to Vijay Jain, Nayavada does not deny the attributes, qualities, modes, and other aspects, but qualifies them to be from a particular perspective. A naya reveals only a part of the totality, and should not be mistaken for the whole. A synthesis of different viewpoints is said to be achieved by the doctrine of conditional predications syadvada. <laughs> Jiva, the changing soul Ancient India, particularly the centuries in which the Mahavira and the Buddha lived, was a ground of intense intellectual debates, especially on the nature of reality and self or soul. Jain view of soul differs from those found in ancient Buddhist and Hindu texts, and Jain view about jiva and ajiva self, matter, utilizes Anakantavada. The Upanishadic thought Hindu postulated the impermanence of matter and body, but the existence of an unchanging, eternal metaphysical reality of Brahman and Atman soul, self. The Buddhist thought also postulated impermanence, but denied the existence of any unchanging, eternal soul or self and instead posited the concept of anatta no self. According to the Vedantin Upanishadic conceptual scheme, the Buddhists were wrong in denying permanence and absolutism, and within the Buddhist conceptual scheme, the Vedantins were wrong in denying the reality of impermanence. The two positions were contradictory and mutually exclusive from each other's point of view. The Jains managed a synthesis of the two uncompromising positions with Anakantavada. From the perspective of a higher, inclusive level made possible by the ontology and epistemology of Anakantavada and Syadvada, Jains do not see such claims as contradictory or mutually exclusive, instead, they are seen as akantika or only partially true. The Jain breadth of vision embraces the perspectives of both Vedanta which, according to Jainism, recognizes substances but not process and Buddhism, which «recognizes process but not substance». Jainism, on the other hand, pays equal attention to both substance and process .This philosophical syncretization of paradox of change through Anakanta has been acknowledged by modern scholars such as Arvind Sharma, who wrote, 
Our experience of the world presents a profound paradox which we can ignore existentially, but not philosophically. This paradox is the paradox of change. Something, a changes and therefore it cannot be permanent. On the other hand, if A is not permanent, then what changes? In this debate between the permanence and change, Hinduism seems more inclined to grasp the first horn of the dilemma and Buddhism the second. It is Jainism that has the philosophical courage to grasp both horns fearlessly and simultaneously, and the philosophical skill not to be gored by either. Topic: <laughs> Inclusivist or exclusivist. Some Indian writers state that Anakantavada is an inclusivist doctrine positing that Jainism accepts non-Jain teachings as partial versions of truth, a form of sectarian tolerance. Other scholars state this is incorrect and a reconstruction of Jain history because Jainism has consistently seen itself in exclusivist term as the one true path. Classical Jain scholars saw their premises and models of reality as superior than the competing spiritual traditions of Buddhism and Hinduism, both of which Jainism considered inadequate. For instance, the Jain text Uttaradhyayana Sutra in section 23.63 calls the competing Indian thought to be heterodox and heretics, and that they have chosen a wrong path, the right path is that taught by the Jinas. Similarly, the early Jain scholar Haribhadra, who likely lived between the 6th and 8th century, states that those who do not follow the teachings of Jainism cannot be approved or accommodated. John Collar states Anakantavada to be epistemological respect for view of others about the nature of existence whether it is inherently enduring or constantly changing, but not relativism, it does not mean conceding that all arguments and all views are equal. In contemporary times, according to Paul Dundas, the Anakantavada doctrine has been interpreted by some Jains as intending to promote a universal religious tolerance and a teaching of plurality and benign attitude to other ethical, religious positions. This is problematic and a misreading of Jain historical texts and Mahavira's teachings, states Dundas. The many-pointedness, multiple perspective Teachings of the Mahavira is a doctrine about the nature of absolute reality and human existence, and it is sometimes called non-absolutism doctrine. However, it is not a doctrine about tolerating or condoning activities such as sacrificing or killing animals for food, violence against disbelievers or any other living being as perhaps right. The five vows for Jain monks and nuns, for example, are strict requirements and there is no perhaps, just one perspective. Similarly, since ancient times, Jainism co-existed with Buddhism and Hinduism, according to Dundas, but Jainism was highly critical of the knowledge systems and ideologies of its rivals, and vice versa. History and development The principle of Anakantavada is one of the foundational Jain philosophical concept. The development of Anakantavada also encouraged the development of the dialectics of Syadvada conditioned viewpoints and Nayavada partial viewpoints. According to Karl Potter, the Jain Anakantavada doctrine emerged in a milieu that included Buddhists and Hindus in ancient and medieval India. The diverse Hindu schools such as Nyaya Vaisheshika, Samkhya Yoga and Mimamsa Vedanta, all accepted the premise of Atman that unchanging permanent soul, self exists and is self-evident. While various schools of early Buddhism denied it and substituted it with anatta no self, no soul. Further, for causation theories, Vedanta schools and Madhyamika Buddhists had similar ideas, while Nyaya Vaisheshika and non-Madhyamika Buddhists generally agreed on the other side. Jainism, using its Anakantavada doctrine occupied the center of this theological divide on soul-self and causation theories, between the various schools of Buddhist and Hindu thought. Topic. Origins The origins of Anakantavada are traceable in the teachings of Mahavira, who used it effectively to show the relativity of truth and reality. Taking a relativistic viewpoint, Mahavira is said to have explained the nature of the soul as both permanent, from the point of view of underlying substance, and temporary, from the point of view of its modes and modification. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Early History. Early Jain texts were not composed in Vedic or classical Sanskrit, but in Ardhamagadhi Prakrit language. According to Madhulal, the earliest Jain literature that present a developing form of a substantial Anakantavada doctrine is found in Sanskrit texts, and after Jaina scholars had adopted Sanskrit to debate their ideas with Buddhists and Hindus of their era. These texts show a synthetic development, the existence and borrowing of terminology, ideas and concepts from rival schools of Indian thought but with innovation and original thought that disagreed with their peers. The early Svetambara canons and teachings do not use the terms Anakantavada and Syadvada, but contain teachings in rudimentary form without giving it proper structure or establishing it as a separate doctrine. Svetambara text, Sutrakritanga contains references to Vibhagyavada, which, according to Hermann Jacobi, is the same as Syadvada and Saptabhangi. For example, Jacobi in his 1895 translation interpreted Vibhagyavada as Syadvada, the former mentioned in the Svetambara Jain canonical text Sutrakritanga. However, the Digambara Jains dispute this text as canonical or even authentic. A monk should be modest, though he be of a fearless mind, he should expound the Syadvada, he should use the two permitted kinds of speech, living among virtuous men, impartial and wise. According to Upadhyay, the Bhagavadasutra also called Vyahayaprajñapti mentions three primary predications of the Saptabhanginaya. This too is a Svetambara text, and considered by Digambara Jains as unauthentic. The earliest comprehensive teachings of Anakantavada doctrine is found in the Tattvarthasutra of Umasvati, considered to be authoritative by all Jain sects, including Svetambara and Digambara. The century in which Umaswati lived is unclear, but variously placed by contemporary scholars to sometime between 2nd and 5th century. The Digambara scholar Kundakunda, Kunda, in his mystical Jain texts, expounded on the doctrine of Syadvada and Saptabhangi in Pravakanasara and Pankastakyasara. Kundakunda Kunda also used Nayas to discuss the essence of the self in Samayasara. Kunda Kunda is believed in the Digambara tradition to have lived about the 1st century CE, but has been placed by early modern era scholars to 2nd or 3rd century CE. In contrast, the earliest available secondary literature on Kunda Kunda appears in about the 10th century, which has led recent scholarship to suggest that he may have lived in or after 8th century. This radical reassessment in Kundakunda Kunda chronology, if accurate, would place his comprehensive theories on Anakantavada to the late 1st millennium CE. <laughs> Parable of the blind men and elephant The Jain texts explain the Anakantvada concept using the parable of blind men and elephant, in a manner similar to those found in both Buddhist and Hindu texts about limits of perception and the importance of complete context. The parable has several Indian variations, but broadly goes as follows. A group of blind men heard that a strange animal, called an elephant, had been brought to the town, but none of them were aware of its shape and form. Out of curiosity, they said. We must inspect and know it by touch, of which we are capable. So, they sought it out, and when they found it they groped about it. In the case of the first person, whose hand landed on the trunk, said, This being is like a thick snake. For another one whose hand reached its ear, it seemed like a kind of fan. As for another person, whose hand was upon its leg, said, The elephant is a pillar like a tree trunk. The blind man who placed his hand upon its side said, Elephant is a wall. Another who felt its tail, described it as a rope. The last felt its tusk, stating the elephant is that which is hard, smooth and like a spear. This parable is called Andha Gajanyaya Maxim in Jain texts. Two of the Jain references to this parable are found in Tattvarthaslokavadika of Vidyanandi 9th century and it appears twice in the Syadvatamanjari of Akarya Malasena 13th century. According to Malasena, whenever anyone takes a partial, unconditional view of the ultimate reality, and denies the possibility of another aspect of that reality, it is an instance of the above parable and a defective view. Malasena goes further in his second reference to the above parable and states that all reality has infinite aspects and attributes, all assertions can only be relatively true. This does not mean skepticism or doubt is the right path to knowledge, according to Malasena and other Jain scholars, but that any philosophical assertion is only conditionally, partially true. 
any and all viewpoints, states Malasena, that do not admit an exception are false views. While the same parable is found in Buddhist and Hindu texts to emphasize the need to be watchful for partial viewpoints of a complex reality, the Jain text apply it to isolated topic and all subjects. For example, the Syadvada principle states that all the following seven predicates must be accepted as true for a cooking pot, according to Madhalal. From a certain point of view, or in a certain sense, the pot exists. From a certain point of view, the pot does not exist. From a certain point of view, the pot exists and does not exist. From a certain point of view, the pot is inexpressible. From a certain point of view, the pot both exists and is inexpressible. From a certain point of view, the pot both does not exist and is inexpressible. From a certain point of view, the pot exists, does not exist, and is also inexpressible. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medieval developments. Acharya Haribhadra, 8th century CE, was one of the leading proponents of Anakantavada. He wrote a doxography, a compendium of a variety of intellectual views. This attempted to contextualize Jain thoughts within the broad framework, rather than espouse narrow partisan views. It interacted with the many possible intellectual orientations available to Indian thinkers around the 8th century. Akarya Amrakandra starts his famous 10th century CE work Upaya with strong praise for Anakantavada. I bow down to the principle of Anakanta, the source and foundation of the highest scriptures, the dispeller of wrong one-sided notions, that which takes into account all aspects of truth, reconciling diverse and even contradictory traits of all objects or entity." Akarya Vidyanandi 11th century CE provides the analogy of the ocean to explain the nature of truth in Tattvarthaslokavartika, 116. Yasavijaya Ghani, a 17th century Jain monk, went beyond Anakantavada by advocating Madhyastha, meaning, standing in the middle, or equidistance. This position allowed him to praise qualities in others even though the people were non Jain and belonged to other faiths. There was a period of stagnation after Yasovyayaji, as there were no new contributions to the development of Jain philosophy. Influence The Jain philosophical concept of Anakantavada made important contributions to ancient Indian philosophy, in the areas of skepticism and relativity. The epistemology of Anakantavada and Syadvada also had a profound impact on the development of ancient Indian logic and philosophy. While employing Anakantavada, the 17th century Jain scholar Yasavijaya stated that it is not Anabhagrahika indiscriminate attachment to all views as being true, which is effectively a kind of misconceived relativism. In Jain belief, Anakantavada transcends the various traditions of Buddhism and Hinduism. Role in Jain history Anakantavada played a role in the history of Jainism in India, during intellectual debates from Saivas, Vaisnavas, Buddhists, Muslims, and Christians at various times. According to John Collar, professor of Asian studies, Anakantavada allowed Jain thinkers to maintain the validity of their doctrine, while at the same time respectfully criticizing the views of their opponents. In other cases, it was a tool used by Jaina scholars to confront and dispute Buddhist scholars in ancient India, or in the case of Haribhadra justify the retaliation of the killing of his two nephews by Buddhist monks, with capital punishment for all Buddhist monks in the suspected monastery. According to the Buddhist version of Haribhadra's biography, there is historical evidence that along with intolerance of non-Jains, Jains in their history have also been tolerant and generous just like Buddhists and Hindus. Their texts have never presented a theory for holy war. Jains and their temples have historically procured and preserved the classic manuscripts of Buddhism and Hinduism, a strong indicator of acceptance and plurality. The combination of historic facts, states court, suggest that Jain history is a combination or tolerance and intolerance of non-Jain views, and that it is inappropriate to rewrite the Jainism past as a history of benevolence and tolerance towards others. Topic. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi mentioned Anakantavada and Syadvada in the journal Young India 21 January 1926. 
According to Jeffrey D. Long, a scholar of Hindu and Jain studies, the Jain Syadvada doctrine helped Gandhi explain how he reconciled his commitment to the reality of both the personal and impersonal aspects of Brahman and his view of Hindu religious pluralism. I am an Advaitist and yet I can support Dvaitism dualism. The world is changing every moment, and is therefore unreal, it has no permanent existence. But though it is constantly changing, it has a something about it which persists and it is therefore to that extent real. I have therefore no objection to calling it real and unreal, and thus being called an Anakantavadi or a Syadvadi. But my Syadvada is not the Syadvada of the learned, it is peculiarly my own. I cannot engage in a debate with them. It has been my experience that I am always true from my point of view, and am often wrong from the point of view of my honest critics. I know that we are both right from our respective points of view. And this knowledge saves me from attributing motives to my opponents or critics. My Anakantavada is the result of the twin doctrine of Satyagraha and Ahimsa. Topic. Against religious intolerance and contemporary terrorism Referring to the September 11 attacks, John Collar states that the threat to life from religious violence in modern society mainly exists due to faulty epistemology and metaphysics as well as faulty ethics. A failure to respect the life of other human beings and other life forms, states Collar, is rooted in dogmatic but mistaken knowledge claims that fail to recognize other legitimate perspectives." Collar states that Anakantavada is a Jain doctrine that each side commit to accepting truths of multiple perspectives, dialogue and negotiations. According to Sabine Scholes, the application of the Anakantavada as a religious basis for "...intellectual ahimsa," is a modern era reinterpretation, one attributed to the writings of A. B. Dhruva in 1933. This view states that Anakantavada is an expression of religious tolerance of other opinions and harmony. In the 21st century, some writers have presented it as an intellectual weapon against intolerance, fundamentalism and terrorism. Other scholars such as John E. Court and Paul Dundas state that, while Jainism indeed teaches non-violence as the highest ethical value, the reinterpretation of Anakantavada as religious tolerance of other opinions is a misreading of the original doctrine. In Jain history, it was a metaphysical doctrine and a philosophical method to formulate its distinct ascetic practice of liberation. Jain history shows, to the contrary, that it persistently was harshly critical and intolerant of Buddhist and Hindu spiritual theories, beliefs and ideologies. John Court states that the Anakantavada doctrine in pre-20th century Jain literature had no relation to religious tolerance or intellectual ahimsa. Jain intellectual and social history toward non-Jains, according to Court, has been contrary to the modern revisionist attempts, particularly by diaspora Jains, to present Jains having exhibited a spirit of understanding and tolerance toward non-Jains, or that Jains were rare or unique in practicing religious tolerance in Indian intellectual history. According to Padmanabha Jaini, states court, indiscriminate open-mindedness and the approach of accepting all religious paths as equally correct when in fact they are not is an erroneous view in Jainism and not supported by the Anakantavada doctrine. According to Paul Dundas, in and after the 12th century, the persecution and violence against Jains by Muslim state caused Jain scholars to revisit their theory of ahimsa For example, Jinadatta Suri in 12th century, wrote during a time of widespread destruction of Jain temples and blocking of Jaina pilgrimage by Muslim armies, that anybody engaged in a religious activity who was forced to fight and kill somebody in self-defense would not lose any merit. N. L. Jain, quoting Akarya Mahaprajna, states Anakantavada doctrine is not a principle that can be applied to all situations or fields. In his view, the doctrine has its limits and Anakantavada doctrine does not mean intellectual tolerance or acceptance of religious violence, terrorism, taking of hostages, proxy wars such as in Kashmir, and that to initiate a conflict is as sinful as to tolerate or not oppose it. The reinterpretation of Anakantavada as a doctrine of religious tolerance is novel, popular but not unusual for contemporary Jains. It is a pattern of reinterpretation and reinvention to rebrand and reposition that is found in many religions, states Scholes. Topic: 
Comparison with non-Jain doctrines According to Bhagchandra Jain, one of the difference between the Buddhist and Jain views is that, "...Jainism accepts all statements to possess some relative truth." While for Buddhism this is not the case, in Jainism, states Jayatilik, "...no proposition could in theory be asserted to be categorically true or false, irrespective of the standpoint from which it was made. In Buddhism such categorical assertions were considered possible in the case of some propositions." Unlike Jainism, there are propositions that are categorically true in Buddhism, and there are others that are anakamsaka uncertain, indefinite. Examples of categorically true and certain doctrines are the Four Noble Truths, while examples of the latter in Buddhism are the Avyakata Theses. Further, unlike Jainism, Buddhism does not have a Nayavada doctrine. According to Karl Potter and other scholars, Hinduism developed various theory of relations such as Satkaryavada, Asatkaryavada, Avirodhavada and others. The Anakantavada overlaps with two major theories found in Hindu and Buddhist thought, according to James Lochtefeld. The Anakantavada doctrine is Satkaryavada in explaining causes, and the Asatkaryavada in explaining qualities or attributes in the effects. The different schools of Hindu philosophy further elaborated and refined the theory of pramanas and the theory of relations to establish correct means to structure propositions in their view. Criticism Indologists such as Professor John E. Court state that Anakantavada is a doctrine that was historical used by Jain scholars not to accept other viewpoints, but to insist on the Jain viewpoint. Jain monks used Anakantavada and Syadvada as debating weapons to silence their critics and defend the Jain doctrine. According to Paul Dundas, in Jain hands, this method of analysis became a fearsome weapon of philosophical polemic with which the doctrines of Hinduism and Buddhism could be pared down to their ideological bases of simple permanence and impermanence, respectively, and thus could be shown to be one-pointed and inadequate as the overall interpretations of reality they purported to be." The Jain scholars, however, considered their own theory of Anakantavada self evident, immune from criticism, needing neither limitations nor conditions. The doctrines of Anakantavada and Sayadavada are often criticized to denying any certainty, or accepting incoherent contradictory doctrines. Another argument against it, posited by medieval era Buddhists and Hindus, applied the principle on itself that is, if nothing is definitely true or false, is Anakantavada true or false? According to Karl Potter, the Anakantavada doctrine accepts the norm in Indian philosophies that all knowledge is contextual, that object and subject are interdependent. However, as a theory of relations, it does not solve the deficiencies in other progress philosophies, just compounds the felony by merely duplicating the already troublesome notion of a dependence relation. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hindu philosophies Nyaya <inaudible> 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 The Nyaya school criticized the Jain doctrine of Anakantavada, states Karl Potter, as wanting to say one thing at one time, the other at another, thereby ignoring the principle of non-contradiction. The Nyayika states that it makes no sense to simultaneously say, Jiva and Ajiva are not related, and Jiva and Ajiva are related. Jains state that Jiva attaches itself to karmic particles, ajiva, which means there is a relation between Ajiva and Jiva. The Jain theory of ascetic salvation teaches cleansing of karmic particles and destroying the bound ajiva to the jiva, yet, Jain scholars also deny that ajiva and jiva are related or at least interdependent, according to the Nyaya scholars. The Jain theory of Anakantavada makes its theory of karma, asceticism and salvation incoherent, according to Nyaya texts. Vaisheshika. <laughs> The Vaisheshika and Shaivism school scholar Vyomashiva criticized the Anakantavada doctrine because, according to him, it makes all moral life and spiritual pursuits for moksha meaningless. Any spiritually liberated person must be considered under Anakantavada doctrine to be a both liberated and not liberated from one point of view, and b simply not liberated from another point of view, since all assertions are to be qualified and conditional under it. 
In other words, states Vyomashiva, this doctrine leads to a paradox and circularity. <inaudible> Vedanta Anakantavada was analyzed and critiqued by Adi Sankaracharya in his Bhasya on Brahmasutra 2 he stated that Anakantavada doctrine when applied to philosophy suffers from two problems, viroda contradictions and samsaya dubiety, neither of which it is able to reconcile with objectivity. It is impossible that contradictory attributes such as being and non-being should at the same time belong to one and the same thing, just as observation teaches us that a thing cannot be hot and cold at the same moment. The third alternative expressed in the words, they either are such or not such, results in cognition of indefinite nature, which is no more a source of true knowledge than doubt is. Thus the means of knowledge, the object of knowledge, the knowing subject, and the act of knowledge become all alike indefinite. How can his followers act on a doctrine, the matter of which is altogether indeterminate? The result of your efforts is perfect knowledge and is not perfect knowledge. Observation shows that, only when a course of action is known to have a definite result, people set about it without hesitation. Hence a man who proclaims a doctrine of altogether indefinite contents does not deserve to be listened any more than a drunken or a madman. Shankara's criticism of Anakantavada extended beyond the arguments of it being incoherent epistemology in ontological matters. According to Shankara, the goal of philosophy is to identify one's doubts and remove them through reason and understanding, not get more confused. The problem with Anakantavada doctrine is that it compounds and glorifies confusion. Further, states Shankara, Jains use this doctrine to be certain that everything is uncertain. According to Karl Potter, Shankara does not take Jains seriously and admits that he doesn't understand Jainism's theory of relations. Contemporary scholars, states Peter Balsarowitz, concur that the Jain doctrine of Anakantavada does reject some versions of the law of non contradiction, but it is incorrect to state that it rejects this law in all instances. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhist philosophy The Buddhist scholar Santaraksita, and his student Kamalasila, criticized Anakantavada by presenting his arguments that it leads to the Buddhist premise, "...jivas souls do not exist." That is, the two of the most important doctrines of Jainism are mutually contradictory premises. According to Santaraksita, Jains state that, "...jiva is one considered collectively, and many considered distributively." But if so debates Santaraksita, "...jiva cannot change." He then proceeds to show that changing jiva necessarily means jiva appear and disappear every moment, which is equivalent to, "...jiva don't exist." According to Karl Potter, the argument posited by Santaraksita is flawed, because it commits what is called in the Western logic as the "...fallacy of division." The Buddhist logician Dharmakirti critiqued Anakantavada as follows, With the differentiation removed, all things have dual nature. Then, if somebody is implored to eat curd, then why he does not eat camel? The insinuation is obvious, if curd exists from the nature of curd and does not exist from the nature of a camel, then one is justified in eating camel, as by eating camel, he is merely eating the negation of curd. <laughs> Self-criticism in Jain scholarship The medieval era Jain logicians Akalanka and Vidyananda, who were likely contemporaries of Adi Shankara, acknowledged many issues with Anakantavada in their texts. For example, Akalanka in his Pramanasamgraha acknowledges seven problems when Anakantavada is applied to develop a comprehensive and consistent philosophy dubiety, contradiction, lack of conformity of bases, karanya, joint fault, infinite regress, intermixture, and absence. Vidyananda acknowledged six of those in the Akalanka list, adding the problem of vyadikara cross-breeding in ideas and apratipati incomprehensibilita. Prabhakandra, who probably lived in the 11th century, and several other later Jain scholars accepted many of these identified issues in Anakantavada application. <laughs> See also